Um, this will be a real brief, inshallah ta'ala, about the Qur'an, Ramadan and Qur'an. Ramadan and the Qur'an. And this book is by Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, rahimahullah, Lata'if al-Ma'arif. And what he did was, he went through every month and discussed the different acts of worship pertaining to that month from the son of the Prophet Which shows us we gotta know that we have to know the Islamic months. Because all of these months are, are, are connected to the Islamic calendar. None of this has to do with January or February into the end of it, or none of those months. All of these are connected to the Islamic months on the Islamic calendar. So when it got to the month of Ramadan, which is what month? What number is Ramadan on the Islamic calendar? Huh? The ninth. The ninth month on the Islamic calendar is Ramadan. So he says, Rahim Allah wa shahr Ramadan lahu khususiyatim bil Qur'an kama qala ta'ala shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Ramadan has a connection to the Qur'an. It's a special connection between Ramadan and the Qur'an. Just like Allah said in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 185, where Allah said, the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed. So when it comes to the month of Ramadan, the Qur'an is very important. The Qur'an is very important. In this brief uh, kalima, we're going to read some of the statements and some of the athar from the Salaf that show how they approached Ramadan. And this should be a gauge for us to let us know what's important during Ramadan. This is not to say what we can't do. When we hear these athar, these narrations, we don't look at it, we're not to look at it, it's not being mentioned to say, I can't do that. It's a mention to say, it should show us how important they held the Quran to be. And therefore they dedicated time, especially during Ramadan, to the Quran. Everybody with me? Because you're gonna hear these athar, uh, and I'm not gonna say what you're gonna say. You whatever pops in your head, pops in your head. But the point of mentioning is to show the level that the Sahaba and the Tabi'in and those who came after them held the Quran, especially during the month of Ramadan. So he says, Well, can the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you feel Kira'a to Kiyam Ramadan Bilayl Akham in the Lady that the that the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Ramadan he would lengthen his recitation when he recited during the Salat, he would make it longer when he was staying at night during Ramadan. Meaning what? The Sunnah is to stand at night after Isha outside of Ramadan. To Hajjit. Huh? A lot of us, we specify the night prayer to only Ramadan. Then after Ramadan, we fall away all. We don't see the night prayer again until the next Ramadan. Allah forgive us. But that's the reality. It says that during Ramadan and at night prayer, he will make this recitation even longer. And Hudayfa, radiallahu anhu, he prayed with the Messenger of Allah one night during Ramadan. He said, Hudayfa said, فَقَرَأَ بِالْبَقَرَةِ He read, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah sallam, he read, Surah Al-Baqarah. Hudayfa said, ثُمَّ النِّسَاء Then he read, Surah Al-Nisa, the whole surah. Khalas? Huh? They're the long surahs. He read Surah Al-Baqarah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he read Surah Al-Nisa. Huh? Then he did what? Thumma Ali Imran. Thumma Ali Imran. Tayyip? He says, Wala yamurru bi ayatin takhweef illa waqafa wa sa'i. And he didn't come to every time, not that he just read the long surahs, Every time he passed the ayah, the ayah that will put that, that will mention something that a person should be fearful of, that he will stop 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he would ask Allah to protect them from that. That's not, now we're not saying, well, I can't read, I don't know the Surah, no, no. The point is, huh, during Ramadan, it was intensified even more. And what do we do? We got to look at ourselves and we got to say, all right, where do I stand on this map at all? What do I, as far as me and the Quran, myself and the Quran? Tayyip. He says, قال, He said, by the time they finished two raka, by the time they finished two raka, Bilal was coming, radiallahu anhu, to call the advance of Fajr. Two raka. How many rakas we do? Tarawih. Tarawih, how many? At least. Huh? Eleven. And we, you know, we hoping sometimes, we hoping you hurry up. About to give us. Two raka to the Bilal came, and all the who called the land for Fajr. Two. But we're not saying that everybody has to stay in the two raka. The point is, the importance of kira'a, reading the Quran, being busy with the Mus'haf in Ramadan, being busy with the Kalam of Allah, Jalla wa'ala, during Ramadan. He says, وَكَانَ عُمَرُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَدْ أَمَرَ أُبَيْهِ بْنِ كَعْبُ وَتَمِيمًا أَدَّارِي أَنْ يَقُومَ بِالنَّاسِ فِي شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ So Umar used to designate, Umar رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ used to designate Ubay bin Ka'ab and Tamim and Adani to do, to lead the people in the Salat. Tayyip, Omar would designate those two to lead the people. فَكَانَ الْقَارِي يَقْرَأُ بِالْمِئَتَيْنِ فِي رَقَةً So whoever led the prayer, they would read 200 ayats per rakah. 200 ayat per rakah. Which could be, uh, how many ayats is sort of the Bakra? 200 and almost 300. al Bakra is almost 300. Per raka, they will read 200 ayat. Hatta, listen to the effect. And this is the benefit of reading these narrations. All right, you say, I don't know, I didn't memorize Bakra. That's not the point. The length that they stood and the people that were following them and the lengths that they went with to get the reward that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned in the Hadith. He said that he would read the, the recital, the lead, or the salat, he would read 200 ayat. حَتَّى كَانُوا يَعْتَمِدُونَ عَلَى الْعَسِي مِنْ طُولِ الْقِيَامِ Until if they had to, if it was too long, honestly, if the imam reads too long in tarawih, what do we do? What you do? Don't be scared. Huh? Okay. Like get on your knees. If you read too long, or not you, what might a person do? Get out the salat. Like, a person might get out of the rank because he reads too long. Right? They said, Hetta. If you read like that, they would do what? Grab sticks to lean on. Now I'm out of here. He's going to. He's overboard with his kid on. They grab sticks to lean on so that they didn't have to leave the salat. So that they continue listening to the Kalam of Allah, the Quran, the recitation of the Quran. They said, Well, Matt Kano, Yan Sarifuna, Illa in the Fajr. And they wouldn't leave until Fajr came. This is not to say that we, huh? We're not saying we're going to do this, but we got to look at ourselves and say, What importance do we give the Quran at all? Where does it value? What value does it hold with us? Outside of Ramadan and in Ramadan. Tell you. In one narration, it says, Another narration that says, if they had to, huh, they would tie ropes to the pillars of the building and do what? Lean on them ropes so they don't fall, so that they wouldn't fall over in the salat. I'm not leaving the salat. Why? Because whoever prays with the Imam in the Hadith. Prophet said, whoever well, we'll prays the Imam until he's finished, then the reward is what? Huh? As if he stood all night. If you stand with the Imam leading the Salat, the Taraweeh, the Prophet is saying, you don't leave until he's finished, is written for you to reward as if you stood all night praying. So they didn't get out the Salat. If I got to, I'm going to tie these two straps on here and just hold myself up in order to get the reward. And they said that 
in the time of the Tabi'een, if a person read uh, Bakala and eight Raqqa, if they read Surah Bakala and eight Raqqa, then that was considered going light on the people. And that doesn't mean, as he says here, as Imam Ahmed Rahim Allah said, that doesn't mean that the Imam or whoever leads the people just does what he wants to do and the people behind him, they have to deal with it. It doesn't mean that. He said, well, in the amr ala nas. Whatever the people can handle, whatever the people that he's needing can handle, that's what the Imam is supposed to uh, carry on, whatever they're able to handle. Not to oppress the people standing behind him. And that statement from Imam Ahmed, it shows, Rahimullah, it shows that the Imam has to have fifth and he has to have understanding and he has to know. He has to know the level of the people following him in the salah. Here, in these narrations, and this is the point of mentioning this here, as I won't, I won't go long at all. It says here, for the person who wants to extend their, their salat, they're standing during Ramadan, and you're standing by yourself, that's fine. A person can extend, when you're standing alone, but when you got people behind you that might be sick, they can't stand that long, they might be old, or somebody got an injury, that you have to pay attention. The man pays attention to the people behind them. Therefore, most of the messages, generally, people pray around the same length here, right? But if you go to another message, then you might find they might extend a little longer. Why? Because the imam knows those people behind them are used to that. They're used to standing longer, so they can do that. You can't hold every message to what you're used to and every imam to what you're used to pray behind. The imam, he leads the salat based on the people who generally pray behind them normally. And he pays attention to that. Tayyip. Here it says, and this shows kira'a, basic reading the Qur'an. What are we busying ourselves with during Ramadan? That we have 11 other months out of the year to busy ourselves with. This time is special. The time that the Qur'an was revealed, it's a special time. And these narrations will show you how the people of the past, how special that they held Ramadan to be, and how serious they were about the Qur'an in Ramadan. Does that mean that we have the ability, every person has the ability to do it? No, we don't all have the ability to do it, but we do have the ability to increase on whatever we're doing. We got the ability to better ourselves to some extent, which means we got to cut out logging in to huh, certain logins. Got to spend more time with the book of the law. All of us. It says, what can about the setup? Yachtim, fitiyam Ramadan, fikulli thalat, Liyan. Some of the Salaf used to complete the entire Qur'an every three nights. That's a lot of time with the Book of Allah. All right, I got a job, I got to work. Everybody got a job and work. We're not saying everybody got to complete three days and three nights. But we got to look at ourselves. How much do we do? And some of them like Qatada, Rahim Allah, he would finish every seven days, every week, complete every week. And some of them, like Abu Raja, he will finish every 10 days. Al-Fatiha, the Anas, Kira'ah, reading. And they will read, especially in Ramadan, they will read the Qur'an in the Salah and outside of the Salah. In the Salah and outside of the Salah. It says, وَكَانَ الْأَسْوَةِ يَقْرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَتَيْنِ فِي رَمَضَانِ An Aswad, every two nights he would finish the Qur'an in Ramadan. In Ramadan, every two nights he would complete. al Fatiha al nas in Ramadan. Everybody with me? In Ramadan, how many nights? Two. وَكَانَ النَّفْعِي يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْهُ خَاصَ النَّفْعِي, he would do every two nights, specifically in the last ten. In the last ten, he would complete every two nights. النَّفْعِي وَفِي بَقِيَةِ الشَّهْرِ فِي ثلاث. But the rest, the first twenty, every three days he would complete. For the first twenty. The first twenty days, Every three days he would complete. In the last ten nights, he would complete it every 
two days, which in itself is a benefit, that they were busy. They made time. We make time for whatever we want. Whatever we really, really, really want to do, we make time for it. That's just bottom line. If we really want to do it, then we make time for it. We find time through the day. Huh? If we want to do it, if it's something that we really want to do, we find a way to do it. We make it work. Diet. وكان قتادة يختم في كل سبع دائما. قتادة will complete the Quran. He will always complete the Quran within seven days. وفي رمضان every three days. قتادة he will complete the Quran every seven days. الفاتحة الناس and in Ramadan every three days. Which shows what? What does that show? Huh? Increase. Tayyip. Diligence when? Huh? He increased on Ramadan, but it shows that what the his relationship with the Quran was not restricted to Ramadan. Huh? It wasn't restricted to Ramadan. In Ramadan, he increased it, intensified it, made it even more. But outside of Ramadan, he would complete every seven days anyway. Huh? Consistent. Hey, you're consistent. All year round. Allah must not. We're trying to finish our 30th for the day. By the fourth day, by the fourth day, huh? we're like halfway through. By the tenth day, if we're not what we're supposed to do, we're back on the first juz again. It was already a part of their lives. Therefore, in Ramadan, they just bumped it up. He was finishing every seven days anyway. Dad, even always seven days. But in Ramadan, he went hard and made every three days. He said, in the last ten nights, he will finish every night. Point being, they were busy with the Quran and Ramadan. It doesn't mean we all got to go here and go above our, our abilities and try to do something that we're not capable of doing. We're not trying to say that. We're trying to look at people who came before us and show if there are examples. Huh? This shows how serious they took the, rec the recitation of the Quran, especially in Ramadan. And that's for us to look at ourselves and say, how serious am I about reading the Book of Allah inside of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan? I'll stop with this. What can the Shafi, the Shafi, Rahim Allah? We know, we all know Imam Shafi, right? Imam Shafi is famous for what? What is Imam Shafi famous for? Huh? Who? Arisala. Fiqh. You know, the Shafi is famous for Fiqh. What can the Shafi if you're on a line, sit to a khatma, yakra uha, fi gayd as salah? You know, the Shafi used to complete the Quran 60 times in Ramadan outside of the salah. 60? 60? Outside of the, outside of the salah. They were busy. The salaf were busy. The salaf were busy with the Quran. Not busy with this one and that one and all the mess that we busy with. They were busy with the Quran. And that's why we're still speaking about them now, a thousand years later. Because Allah raised them. Allah raised them. So now, a thousand years later, we're still talking about them. 700, 800 years later, we're still talking about these people. And their books are still preserved. And people all over the world are reading them. They were busy with the book of Allah. And then there are other people that, that the same thing was mentioned, like Qatada, that they would uh, study the Quran, or Kana Zuhri, Ida Dakhla Ramadan, Qala Ta Inna Ma Huwa, Tilawatul Quran, with Ram Ta'am. That a Zuhri said, Rahim Allah, when Ramadan comes, there's only two things to do. There's two things to do when Ramadan comes feed people and recite the Quran. Feed people and recite the Quran. And Imam Malik, Rahim Allah, they said, إِذَا دَخْلَ رَمَضَانَ نَفْرَ مِنْ قِرَاتِ الْحَدِيثِ وَمَجَالَسَ الْأَهْلِ وَمَجَالَسَ الْأَهْلِ الْأَلْمِ That Imam Malik, Rahim Allah, when Ramadan came, he would read hadith, put the hadith to the side. Imam Malik, Rahim Allah, Imam al-Dar al-Hijrah. 
right? Imam Malik, which is, what is Imam Malik famous for? Huh? Which is what? Fiqh. And he was famous for? Huh? Hadith. He was famous for Fiqh, Hadith, Imam Malik. He said when, he, when Ramadan came, he put the Hadith to the side. And sit with Ahl al sit with the sky, put that to the side. Well, up on the Tilawat al Quran and Mushaf. He would do what? Read the Quran. These are the examples we have left that that left, and this is something that we should look at and look at ourselves. And not look at anybody, look at ourselves. How much time do I spend with the Quran during the month of Ramadan? We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait until Ramadan to get started. But the question is, during this month, if Allah allows us to reach it, how much time do we spend with the Qur'an? Uh, we'll stop there, as it's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of uh, uh, thought like this. It says, Tarqa Jamir Ibadah, that they will leave off everything. They will leave off Sufyan al Allah. It says, إِذَا دَخَلَ رَمَضَانَ تَرَقَ الْجَمِيرَ إِبَادَةِ وَأَقْبَلَ عَلَى تِلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ he will leave off all the other extra worship, the extra ones, the voluntary, and he will what? Quran, Quran, Book of Allah. Aisha, Radhiallahu It's a bunch of them, which shows that what the example we've been left with is to do what? Stick to the Book of Allah. Stick to the Quran, and given the Quran is right, especially during the month of Ramadan. I'll stop there. Subhanallah, uh, Um,